All right, so today, a little demonstration of star life going from birth in nebula all the way to either a black hole or a neutron star. So we're gonna focus specifically on massive stars today. So what we have here, a little balloon. This balloon can represent our nebula to begin with. Um, funnel, because it makes it a lot easier. And some glitter. What this glitter is gonna represent for us is it's gonna represent a bunch of the different gases. So we start off, we can put a lot of hydrogen in there. Imagine at the, right, at the moment that hydrogen is being pulled in by gravity. Let's throw a little bit more in there because, you know, we have a lot of hydrogen inside of stars. Put some helium in there as well. Not quite as much because there's less helium in there primarily being made up of hydrogen and a little bit of ionized gas. This is a mixture of a bunch of different ones, which is why I'm choosing to use the multicolored one. And we don't do a lot of that. So imagine what's happening over time right in the middle of this is that gravity is slowly starting to bring it together. As gravity brings it together, it starts to swirl and the swirling results in the eventual formation. The, the star takes the shape, starts to take shape temperature increases dramatically millions of degrees at a time. So massive stars, remember, are at least five times larger than the size of our own sun or medium or to small stars. So if I were to start blowing this up, we'll talk about what the star's main sequence would be. So imagine right now, and this is kind of nice because you can see the glitter inside of here, this could be a representation of the massive star's main sequence, and it's just Swirling around in the middle, if I swirl it and then get a little bit closer, you can actually see if I bounce it more and more and more. This is a great example of nuclear fusion, right? Hydrogen atoms, uh, intense temperature, bouncing around each other more and more and more. Now, eventually what happens is these hydrogen starts to burn out, starts to get converted to helium, and it expands a little bit more. This next expansion, we can see it getting larger. This would be a representation of our red supergiant. Uh, every star does reach a supergiant stage. It's a question of if it's uh, uh, it does reach a red giant stage. It's a question of if it's a supergiant or not. Stars like ours will just be called a red giant. Uh, on the other hand, what you will get with massive stars is you get what's known as a red supergiant. But the next part's really exciting, and this is actually be the supernova. So what you're going to notice is I'm going to continuously blow the balloon up until eventually it's going to pop. And hopefully, hopefully. Uh, the glitter, which is representing the material inside the star, will go that way, not all over me. So let's find out. So what we have right here, definitely we can see we're totally at the red giant stage. In fact, because I'm starting to feel it getting closer, I'm a little concerned that it actually needs to pop in my mouth. So maybe if we just do it like this. Now, what you should see a little bit um, is that the glitter went everywhere. Specifically, if we actually come really close down to the floor, what you can see here is the little particles of glitter. And this is an example of what happens in the supernova. You have this massive explosion all at once. Now, eventually what happens is one of two options. One is that the glitter can actually come back together really, really tight and dense, and it can result, and you can see obviously there's glitter all over me. Uh, what you could see is you can start to get the formation of a neutron star. Now on the other hand, if the core actually collapses on itself, what will happen instead is that we'll start to get what's known as a black hole. And this black hole will actually pull energy into its surrounding due to gravity. 